Good afternoon. Um, what I've been trying to uh, draw attention to and explore and partially explain in previous video videos is the basis of astrological thinking. Um, if anyone wants to go into it in any depth, I suppose it could be uh, a good line of inquiry to explore Samuel Taylor Coleridge, who I've um, d discussed very briefly or brought into the picture very briefly, because it, it, it draws attention to the realm of the symbolic, the, the realm of um, this a strange world of the imagination which of course he divided into two aspects, the primary imagination and the secondary imagination. And uh, the primary being simply the um, biological basis of the brain, which takes in, um, in uh, sensations in form of light and so on. It takes in the outer world of objects and transforms them into an ordered whole of some kind. Then we give those names with the other part of the mind in, in order to bring them alive in the, in the rational mind, um, uh, which is a, a different part, which is to do with reason and understanding that two concepts is he also brought to these, to the secondary and primary imagination. So the primary is really the biological basis and is explored by science and uh, neuroscience and this increasing, increasingly valuable knowledge about how the mind and uh, brain interacts. Now there are some cause here for uh, scientific debate about whether it's simply a, a, phys a physiological, biological base um, but I, I don't think so, because the mind seems to be able to produce the creative effects as it uh, begins to communicate with different, the, the brain communicates with other parts of the brain, which um, are more symbolic, imaginal. Um, the, the, the pattern of understanding and the patterns of understanding and the attempt to find meaning in story or drama. You see, this is the capacity of the brain which draws together image and symbol and concept all into one realm to form meaning. And this whole idea of a, a, a part of the brain finding meaning or purpose um, or, or, or being able to abstract things beyond that which can be seen into the realm of the unknown to, to bring through image and story and speculation, if you like, um, into regions of the mind and understanding of life is all part of a different function of the mind which you might call the higher mind or perhaps a more spiritual or a religiously oriented mind which seeks to grasp what is beyond it. So that higher function of meaning uh, comes through the play of reason in the uh, Coleridge, um, Coleridge terms comes through the interplay of reason and uh, understanding. Now these are very specific terms that he means and his um, his philosophy very much centers on um, Goethe, of course. Um, uh, but he found in life this natural series of images and correspondences between things, rather like the old astrologers uh, believed in the theory of correspondences, that all things were connected in an essence. But uh, Coleridge took this much further in the form of a, of a radical uh, philosophy, drawing upon um, di different sources for his, um, for his own version of uh, a kind of romantic philosophy of life. Uh, it's, it's too complicated and long uh, to go into to, de to delineate this. But Coleridge also, uh, the secondary imagination, was that to do with um, discursive reason and more to do with the noetic part of the mind of the Platonic philosophy, the nous, uh, uh, which can be divided into two parts too. And the, the idea of this w w was that the imagination could bring life to things, that um, that very active part of the creative mind seeking to bring together th uh, things uh, alive with meaning and purpose and function and that would uh, d derive from us a kind of action or a, a, a series of reactions. 
it's uh, when when I was studying this years ago it seemed to me that this primary and secondary imagination um, uh, was probably the basis um, although I don't think Freud ever um, uh, qualified his writings in these terms because I think he wanted to take it from the romantic uh, the idea of the uh, of a romance with life um, which by the way uh, Coleridge is I think a further delineation of Ficino in this sense that the soul of things is where the communication between the upper the regions, the nous and the body takes place. And in that one can be seen the, the, the act of creation um, it, within the soul of this uh, colliding of opposites and the production of forces and the vitalizing forces of life um, which support meaning and purpose through experience. Uh, the primary and secondary process of the imagination that Freud derived uh, to do very much with the primary functions of instincts and the biochemical processes and he saw that the secondary processes are that which we what what we make of it um, are labels and rationalizations of various functions or forces can either be very mechanical or very imagistic but it, images as we've seen uh, what I've been talking about are the very uh, uh, fundamentals of, of this type of secondary imagination. Imagistic um, uh, qualities which provide uh, illumination and fascination and draw upon the uh, deep recesses of mind to draw out um, uh, interest and, uh, uh, and the power of a dynamic um, image which can produce action and not only functionality but action towards a purpose. A kind of teleology arrives in this that we we see a future, we see a purpose, we see something beyond ourselves, something that you might call the transcendent and it's the search for this transcendent or the the glimpsing of it through the imaginary and through what is uh, um, invoked and uh, supplied through the imagination which keeps the the function of evolution going so we've explored then this nature of, of the imagination as the and the rules and laws of imagination um, uh, as the basis or I'm drawing a connection between the basis the very functional basis the very um, uh, theoretical basis of astrological thinking of course astrology offers its own particular brand of working with the imagination it utilizes the um, the actual uh, uh, the actual objects of the heavens or what is known as the heavens the the, the, the universe up there in the celestial realms which from time immemorial were connected to right back to the Sumerians and then through the Babylonians and uh, the Chaldeans uh, and uh, Egyptian life of course um, the, 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 the function and process of our lives were intimately connected with these planetary cycles um, and they were given names they were given I um, uh, functions and principles they were they were uh, elevated to the power of gods because they provided order and so the whole solar system was seen as the um, movement in time of uh, uh, celestial forces of some kind and that through the imagination it was through our uh, 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 relationship through the imagination to the, to the stars the planets and and then seeing uh, and, and, and somehow imitating them, a very perhaps early form of imitative magic uh, through similarity, that we were able to find or forge a connection through the imagination, what might be called a synderesis, as is coming out in the, in the uh, uh, um, uh, books of Agrippa and uh, occult terminology and so on which is a kind of fusion between us and a divine a divine force or divine power or being a diva shining one um, from some other other realm now of course these projections onto the onto the outer objects may well be only 
um, the projections of the brain structure. It, it tells us something about the structure of the psyche because images produce uh, activations of content of our imagination and our feelings. Uh, colors, very similar to colors. They, it's not, you know, just to call a color green and leave it at that is not it. Green conjures up uh, 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 feelings. It, it has a vibratory tone. So it conjures up an essence or a feeling. We can either be revolted by various colors or affected by them. Obviously, the science of color and, and, and to do with the actual ev uh, evocation of, of um, uh, let's say biochemicals or uh, things within us is uh, there's a lot to be explored in this uh, relation of our mind and feelings and biochemistry to the outer world but astrology therefore takes an, an orderly pattern of the heavens which has been um, a link between them through calendar and time and astrology of course was one of those disciplines which um, saw that uh, th this tried to delineate what were the functions of smaller and smaller pieces of time. Hours of the day were ruled by astrology in the old planetary hours. Even minutes or um, certain times, time periods of the day uh, were, were, were tried to be uh, reflected upon uh, as the powers of the universe um, moved through every set, every um, uh, every period of time, every motion of eternity um, within a con conceptual time frame. So there's eternity is going on in the in the um, in the uh, scheme of the planets in the cycles and so on, uh, but also how that it, it, eternal time gets uh, it influences our, and impacts life on Earth uh, and the life of the individual. So it's uh, almost um, astrology produced a, a functional um, a way of identifying oneself or moving through a kind of imitative guidance, if you like, uh, in the very functions and foundations of the state of what we did at particular times of the year through the seasons. And within those seasons, different parts of the day, uh, different parts of life, activities that we could do and, and should not do in accordance with the gods. Um, uh, appropriations, invocations, uh, prayers and so on, all of these archaic or so-called archaic ways of trying to find a relationship with uh, the uh, dignity and the functionality and the purpose of being alive as, a, as an individual, incarnate individual, and trying to find a link between the higher purposes of, uh, of the heavens, the celestial spheres. This was further differentiated, of course, in, uh, in the Renaissance between the celestial hierarchies, although I think that was a book by um, um, Pseudo Dionysus, I think, the celestial um, hi hierarchies uh, outlining what the powers and the, 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 the levels of the powers that go up um, through the planets, through the elemental forces into the fixed stars and beyond there, the Empyrean uh, behind the fixed stars. Anyway, I'm waxing uh, lyrical going off my brief here to do with the uh, quality of astrology that I, uh, and the functional basis of astrology and the imposition of a particular order on the imagination in order to um, find some uh, uh, helpful use of, of it. Now, even if that is the basis this uh, primitive uh, logic through symbol and analogy and similarity and so on, even if it is through that, it is not to say that astrology can't be used for different reasons. Uh, it can't be, if it can't be used, it's used in different ways. Some people associate it with um, uh, systems of uh, psychology which accord with the fundamental nature of archetypal patterns and those principles operating in life seen through the planetary system and associating that through imaginative links with the psychology of the individual. 
this uh, has pr proved a very fruitful line of analysis for astrologers, bringing life to the symbol, bringing a, a vehicle through which we can contemplate our own evolution, our understanding and our development through the cosmic cycles of transits and progressions and what is unfolding throughout um, our, our uh, time. Then, of course, as I mentioned before in a different video, there are also these um, the, 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 a more divinatory approach through horary astrology or a, a specific form of um, a, a applying uh, uh, um, through medical astrology, applying our, our ideas about how uh, uh, how to use astrology for a specific functional purpose. Electional astrology uh, is a kind of appropriation astrology, an old magical form where we we use astrology and and see it as as a um, a pattern of forces operating through a particular point in time, and so we can elect a horoscope in order to initiate. Uh, an event or process um, very similar to the initiation of life from the womb is 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 um, symbolized by the ascent life out of the womb sorry um, is symbolized by the ascendant and there are many many different types of um, psychology too in the psychology of Noel Till we can see this idea of needs and desires emanating out from every planet and the idea is that these these div this divided self in us which wants wants this or wants that or uh, different needs and processes which want to be fulfilled and so the planets and planets in signs become this um, become a a, 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 a desire uh, uh, had it having a kind of id force, a, a biological necessity, and needs then promote behavior, and be behavior uh, goes out and tries to generate the satisfaction of these needs. Um, th this is a form of um, psychology derived from Henry Murray that uh, Noel Till used and applied in astrology in a very, um, a very realistic and practical way. The divinatory form of astrology is to more contemplate the processes um, uh, and uh, placements of, of the astrological chart as a form of divinatory allegory. Now this approach has been championed or brought much more into um, uh, um, common usage and uh, amongst astrologers through what, uh, what I know is the company of astrologers, Jeffrey Cornelius and um, uh, Maggie Hyde, each in their individual, in their own ways, pursuing this path of um, forming in astrology a deeper relationship other than simply interpretation. Interpretation is valid, and useful, and helpful, and can be used as a framework for various contexts of interpretation, uh, various contexts of meaning. So, for example, Noel Till in his uh, earlier work used to look at a horoscope and, and say, well, there are transits coming up. What can we do with them? What could this imply? Let's let's participate in our astrology as opposed to seeing that as Saturn coming up to the MC or Saturn coming to the ascendant and waiting for what will befall us. Uh, Tol, uh, Till is also a very imaginative astrologer, encouraging us to move along with this uh, strange order of the planets, which seem to uh, delineate a certain type of development. So he says that, you know, get to know yourself, move along with the symbol and see what you can make of it. A kind of electional astrology in the future. You know, if Saturn is transiting your ninth house, it's saying you need to really be able to think about a higher education, what 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 you will be doing to to, to satisfy your um, inquiring mind, to fill out to to um, fill out yourself and and to um, experience much more of life, to educate yourself in a higher form, and then that will pay off. Let's say in the form of a job, perhaps when Saturn moves over the tenth house. 
cusp. So it's as if one is a kind of training, the, the ninth house is a kind of movement out into more experience in life, for self-promotion, the function of mind. But if Saturn's moving there, it's a discipline of mind, or the higher functions of mind. But when it moves across an angle, this will symbolise as taking it into action, taking it much more into the world, from inside, if you like, to the outside. A very highly practical, useful uh, form of astrology indeed, but still kind of working with the symbol itself, albeit in a, in a different way. So astrology as divinatory allegory is, is when a person comes to an astrologer, it, the, uh, the astrological, the, the meeting between client and astrologer and the context of a person's life at that particular time becomes, the, the, the symbol then informs us of, of what's going on, if you like, now and can, can offer a form of uh, guidance uh, to, to the individual in some present pertinent way within their individual life without having to apply a theory to them from which to interpret. Anyway, these are the different uh, forms of astrology which I've hinted at it in previous videos and I wanted to hear just to um, um, ground, if you like, some of the other videos in uh, this, uh, in, in, let's say, a, a theory of epistemology. Um, epistemology being a knowledge valid, uh, a valid knowledge system. So the epistemology of astrology, the knowledge going through it, is it a valid knowledge system as I have suggested? Well, when seen in this light, um, through uh, Coleridge's um, ideas and Goethe's ideas, it does very much link in to earlier ideas of how we how knowledge and guidance through knowledge is gained. It's not always by the rational uh, faculty of logical deductive thinking.